If you were going to build the ultimate poker table, what would it have? A chip tray? Maybe a raised padded rail? How about some LED lights behind that? If you were going to do that, you might as well have some cup holders that are movable and can be positioned anywhere on the table. That way it doesn't matter if you're six-handed or ten-handed. And why not add a shuffler to it? That would make it the ultimate home poker game table. Kind of like the ones you see on TV at the final table playing for a million dollars. We're going to start with a big sheet of plywood. It's a four foot by eight foot. We're going to use the full sheet. It's three quarter inch thick. Let's see, see how thick that is. Full sheet. We're going to measure two feet in from the edge and then two feet in from this edge and then two feet in from this edge. Find our center point and we're going to use that to draw our radius for our half circle. We went ahead and put a screw into the wood and this is going to be our pivot point. Now we're going to build a frame to attach to the table. We're going to use two by three. All right, so this is the box that we built. That's going to help keep the table nice and straight for years. And it's also going to make it so when we put in our lights, and attach them. We can actually set this down on the ground if we're ever transporting it and it's not going to hit any of the wires or anything. Went ahead and traced it as you can see here and then we went ahead and put the frame on the bottom. What we're going to do now is I know it's 13 and a half inches from the edge of the frame to the edge of the board. Use our tape measure until we hit the board. And we can see we're hitting the board there. Like 14 so we need to get this to 13 and a half we need to scoot this down just about a quarter of an inch and we'll do this all the way around and once we do that we know that where we traced it lines up with the frame underneath and we can screw straight down we also have our bases out so we're going to put the table on top of the bases now we got the table up on top of the base we have to attach it so now that we got them in place where we want them we're going to come underneath drill it with a 5 16th drill bit to fit a 5 16th carriage bolt that we're going to use to install it so we're going to drill four holes into these big ones right here so we're going to use carriage bolts to hold the base to the actual table how these work is the little square you're going to hammer that in to the wood that's going to hold the bolt still and what we're going to do is we're going to countersink it so this head sits flush with the top of the table with this here and then we'll hammer this in and before we do that we're going to add some Gorilla Glue to make sure this bolt never comes out. Alright so we're going to add a little bit of water here because the Gorilla Glue is actually cures when it's mixed with the water. Just add some of the Gorilla Glue directly to the bolt. So now you can see it's nice and flush with the table. We'll be able to put the felt right over top of that. The glue takes about one to two hours to kind of dry, about 24 hours to cure. And it expands about three times the amount that's poured out. So we'll go ahead and do all eight bolts and we'll move on to the next step after we get these bolts done. And you can see how the Gorilla Glue starts to foam up and expand. So that's gonna help lock these bolts into place. Hex nuts hold it on the bottom. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get the shape cut out. And we're gonna do that with a jigsaw, but it has like a small blade on there instead of the wide one. It's gonna make it easier to go ahead and follow this curve. All right, so now we went ahead and cut the shape out, took off this corner piece. We're actually gonna take this corner piece here. We found our line for the middle. We line that up 
that point up with the line in the middle we came in four inches and we're actually going to use this template to draw out the dealer cutout all right now we got the dealer cutout going and the shuffle tech shuffler actually comes with a template so we went ahead and put the template down drew our lines around it we're going to use a jigsaw to cut it out but to get started we're going to use a hole saw and just drill near the edges so we can fit our jigsaw blade in it now we got the hole cut out for the shuffle tech but one thing they put in the manual is you have to cut this off to make it a 45 degree angle on both short sides so we got to cut this off at a 45 degree angle and cut this other short side off at a 45 degree angle to be able to fit the shuffle tech so we're going to use an oscillating machine two by four that was underneath the actual dealer chip tray we use a skill saw and plunge cut that all out there Now what we're doing is working on the rail. This is going to be the bottom sheet for the rail. It's a 3 16 masonite. So what we're going to do is cut this out six inches wide all the way around. And we'll start with the bottom of our rail. Then we'll build the middle and then we'll put it on the top. All right, here are the cutouts. That's going to be the start of the padded rail. This is the 3 16 inch. This is going to be on the bottom. We're actually going to wrap this with some cloth. Then we're gonna put the ribs on top of it. And then after we're done that, we're gonna put the plywood portion of it on top of that. And that's gonna complete the rail. And we're gonna go ahead and pad this. So now this is the cloth that we're gonna put around the bottom of the armrest. bottom of the rail wrapped up with the fabric you can see how it's all the way wrapped on both sides we did relief cuts in them to prevent the fabric from bunching up like this so what we're going to do now is cut out some of these clumps of fabric so when we put our ribs in everything sits nice and flat so we have our ribs for the armrest we have 21 of these one and a half inch boards and we cut them four and seven eighths because the rail itself is five inches so we actually want it to come and sit back about an eighth of an inch and then that's where we're going to rest our plexiglass and that's going to hold our lights behind that here we have the plexiglass this is 16th of an inch so this is going to be able to bend around the rail and cover up the lights that we're going to put behind here we're going to go ahead and cut this to one and a half inches and it'll be the height of these blocks here plexiglass cut out to one and a half inch strips and then right before we install it we're going to go ahead and take off the protective layer on the front and back this is the 16th of an inch you can see it's real flexible we did a dry fit to make sure everything was going to fit like it was supposed to before we started attaching and gluing everything all right so now you see we got the bottom panel done and we did little relief cuts and used the gorilla glue to glue this all down now we're going to attach the ribs on top of here drill bit right there is going to be just big enough so we'll go ahead and drill that right here on the end and we'll be able to thread the led lights through here so we used the drill and you can see how we notched it out 
So that's going to be our support. We're going to put that on the table and we're going to run the lights through it. So we're going to double check first, make sure these lights fit. Yep, and the lights fit perfectly in there. So now we'll go ahead and get all these drilled out and then get them attached, all the ribs attached to this bottom part of the armrest. And then we'll go ahead and secure the top part, clamp them down to the drill press. That way we can just push this in and then drill right in the exact same spot on every single one of these. And we have 21 in total. All right, now that we got all of our ribs set up, we're gonna do construction glue. We're using the Gorilla Glue, and we're basically gonna glue all of these into place. We have our little gun here. And we're just gonna make sure that we glue it all the way to the back edge here. So then that way when we put our back edge on, it's flush. But we also wanna make sure up on the front edge here, we leave that eighth of an inch to be able to rest our plexiglass on top of and then you can see where we already have the cutouts to run the LEDs inside of so you can see here we've come underneath the blocks that we have glued to the uh, bottom piece and we went ahead and marked them two and a half inches in since it's a five inch rail and then three quarter inch to get the actual middle and what we did on the underside was we trimmed out where the drill them through so that way it doesn't snag the fabric and get all tangled up and then ruin the work we've already done. So we'll go ahead and drill all this out now. All right, and to make sure we got all the holes perfectly straight going through, we used the drill press and we used a little bit of a support to hold it up into place. So now all these holes are drilled perfectly straight. We're gonna be able to put this back on the table, follow that same hole down and then follow that same hole up to get through the top board so all the holes will be perfectly straight up and down so it won't be hard to pull this out when you have to pull out 21 screws to replace anything this is the foam for the poker table it's a quarter inch thick foam now we got the foam all over and we use the gorilla spray adhesive to attach it trim the sides using a razor blade got the table covered in the quarter inch foam we went ahead and cut out our slot for our chip tray and then for our shelf holder so now what we got to do is we're going to put on the felt and we'll go ahead and get it stapled all right so you can see we're starting to cut out spots for the shuffler and for the chip rack and all we did was just cut from corner to corner so these things can fold down and now we're just going to bend them back over and staple them to the bottom So now we got the holes drilled out and all 21 of the ribs and what we did on the that is we lined it up put a little bit of paint on the end of a quarter inch drill on the back end and dipped it through to find out where our mark was and then we went ahead and cut out where the drill is going to go so it doesn't snag this material and wrap up into the drill bit and pretty much destroy what we've done already cut out holes for all this. So now we're going to put this back into place. We're going to clamp it and then we're going to go ahead and drill straight down into it. Alright, so now we'll go ahead and drill from the bottom and get this part done and then we're going to put the carriage bolts and install it from the top and put nuts on the bottom. To cover up the sides of the ribs, we're going to use oak paneling and we simply attach that to the ribs. For the inside, we cut a quarter inch strip 
and attached it to the inside of the holes using Bondo, as you can see here in the corners, that reddish looking clay. That dries hard and holds it in place and it's gonna give us a flat surface to attach the LED lights to using their peel and stick feature. We also use the paneling on the outside of the ribs and we had simply attached it using the construction adhesive and screws as you can see here. So we put a screw into all 21 ribs and to hide these screws we simply added a second layer of paneling as you can see here and we used more of the Gorilla construction adhesive to glue it together and we used these clamps here to hold it in place for a few hours until everything was set. Now, this is the top of the armrest taken off, and you can see the quarter 20 by four inch carriage bolts are all glued in there. We use the Gorilla Glue to glue them all in. What we're gonna do now is add our foam on top of our rail. Our rail width is five inches. The foam is just under seven inches. So we're gonna put the whole thing on and wrap it, and it's gonna give us foam on the edges so when people rest their arms, it's nice and comfy. You're gonna pull this corner up and you're gonna pull it as if you're gonna go straight this way. You can find the corner right there. You're gonna fold that back that way and then you're going to fold it one more time on the top like that and that's going to give you a nice clean corner like that and what we got to do is we got to take it step by step and staple it, staple it right there We'll probably cut out some of this excess material, staple it again, and then we'll staple it a third time without all this material in here. So it sits nice and flush on top of the poker table. Here's where you can see the oak panel used on the outside and then the quarter inch strip used on the inside. And that's what we attach the LED lights to. Now we're gonna cover up the LEDs with plexiglass, but it's clear, so we need something to cover that so we can hide the contents behind it. So we're going to use frosted privacy film. This is going to hide everything, but as you can see there with my fingers close up, you still can see the contents. So what we're going to use is white spray paint and do a light misting to cover it. Now you can see it looks like a white plain border, but when we turn the lights on, the color still shows through. All right, here we're getting to the end. We have the shuffler flush mount kit in. We have the ribs. You can see how we ran the lights. We came up through a hole in the bottom, came to the side. And if you look in between, the lights ran down there. We have the plexiglass on the front. Then on the back end, we have paneling that we cut to two and three quarter inches. And now we're gonna go ahead and get on padded rail. You can see all the staples underneath carriage bolts which are already glued in we'll go ahead and get this on here now these are the washers and the nuts that hold the rail down thing we have to do is install the shuffler. It comes with the flush mount kit which has this threaded rod that connects to this eye hook which we already attached to the table and then the threaded rod attaches to this bar that runs under the middle of the unit to another threaded rod on the other side. Once you tighten these two threaded rods it pulls the unit up and holds it tight in place. Next we went ahead and plugged the unit in to the power strip along with the LED lights. You can see the unit has a low profile and sits in the middle. 
Let's test the Shuffle Tech Shuffler with an unedited recording of it in action and the results of the shuffle. Is this thing worth the price? All right, Max, the table's done. We're gonna play some heads up, no limit today. And we're gonna play for all the chicken. So that means if you don't win, you don't eat. You got that puppy? Okay, let's shake on it. Give me a paw. Okay. What do you mean you gotta get ready for poker? Who gets ready for poker? Shovel up the gear. 